Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I show you how to set up twin electric motors for an RC model aircraft. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up two electric motors for multi-engine multi RC flight. I've never flown a multi-engine uh, aircraft for RC, with the exception of this little duet. Uh, this is a ready-fly model and it's kind of unique in that you need both engines to power this lightweight model and actually through differential thrust that's how you turn the model but what i'm going to do in this video again just regular motors how you can set them up to have twin uh, twin motors running there are different ways to do this with either uh, a battery for each motor a single battery for the whole setup a single electronic speed control I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way for normal sports size models where you don't have extremely large batteries, and that's to use two motors, two electronic speed controls, and two batteries for the setup. So this is the um, setup I've used for this video. Note, I've just put four pieces of foam board together, and it's enough to hold the um, motors in for the demonstration. These are just little balsa um, things to represent the props. Remember, when you're sitting in the cockpit, the prop should uh, rotate clockwise. So when you're looking at it this way, they rotate counterclockwise. You need to make sure, obviously, the motors are operating in the proper direction. As a reminder, if any brushless motor is going in the wrong direction, it's super easy to reverse the direction of the motor. All you do is you take any uh, two wires of the motor, it doesn't matter which one, swap them out, and that will correct the um, rotation direction of the motor. So just to review, this is a normal setup. We have the electric motor with three wires. Three wires can uh, connect to the three wire system from the electronic speed control. This portion goes into the receiver and this portion with the two wires is what's connected to the battery. Now what happens for our electrical setups these days is the electronic speed controllers have what they call a battery elimination circuit. And that's the middle wire of the three wires that connect that. And I'll show you here in a second. The BEC, or battery elimination circuit, is basically a voltage regulator. What happens is one cell of a LiPo is 3.7 volts, two cells will be 7.2, and so forth, if you add them up. On this setup, I'm going to be using a two-cell LiPo battery, which is 7.2 volts. So that should be enough voltage to power the electric motors. But what the ESC does with the BEC is it'll step down that voltage down to 5 volts, which is what is needed to power the receiver and the servos of the model. In the old days, we used gas engines. We actually had a little NICAD battery in the um, airplane called the flight pack. That would just power the electronics, the receiver, and the servo. The wonderful thing about electric flight, the um, flight battery, uh, the LiPo, Provides enough juice voltage for the engine, step it down with the BEC for the electronics, and also the BEC, the battery eliminator circuit, when the voltage gets down to a certain level where it is going to, if it drops much lower, you won't be able to control the electronics, the BEC will automatically cut off electrical power to the motors so you don't have any thrust, but it will retain sufficient power that your electronics work and the um, uh, the controls, the servos for the rudder elevator controls can bring you back in for a, a dead, state, dead state glider landing. Now the important thing about this whole discussion of the BEC is as follows. When here we have a setup for the twin motors. We have twin motors here. One thing I want to point out is I am not using the same motor for this just because I want to save a little bit of money. I just took two motors out of my parts bin I did a um, very sophisticated analysis of the dynamics of the electrical load. The, no, I didn't do any of that stuff. I just said they all look about the same. I think that'll work out okay for a sport model. If you have some really big, important project, you do probably want to get identical electrical motors, but I think this should be okay for the foam board model that I'm going to build to test it out in. So what happens is, as I mentioned, this setup will have two electronic speed controls and two batteries. That's going to be the easiest way to set it up. The important thing of this whole video on this is as follows. If you look at the electronic speed control, this goes to the motor with the three wires. Two wires go to the battery. 
this is what is connected to the receiver. Notice that the middle wire here is a BEC wire. I've cut it. I've cut it because what happens is when you have two BECs, if they're both trying to talk to the receiver and control the voltage, they'll fight each other, gets con confused. So what I do is I keep one BEC, the middle wire, intact for this motor. This one is cut. And then I connect it with a Y connector here to go into the receiver. So as far as the receiver is concerned, there's one BEC connection to the motors. Now what has to happen is, we'll demonstrate this here in a second, it's very important that you plug the battery first into the ESC with the uh, battery eliminator um, circuit, the BEC uh, uh, fully uh, connected. You'll see the motor works. Then you plug in the second battery um, here for the other motor and that'll work pretty well. Now another thing we have to discuss is lengthening the wires. As you can see on this one, we have the motor, the electronic speed control, and then the battery. Well, what wires can I extend because maybe I want to keep the batteries and the ESCs in the fuselage or in the engine the shell. It, 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 you, you have to make those decisions. So I've got another video on this, lengthening the wires. I'll put it in the description. But the very important thing is we cannot mess around to the length of the wires between the battery to the electronic speed control. That's why this capacitor is here. These are a fixed length because when it's plugged in, the battery electrical pulses are being used by the ESC to turn the electrical motor. If you start lengthening this, it can throw off that timing sequence. It is okay to extend the wires from the ESC to the motor. That doesn't matter. So I could, if I wanted to, take the ESCs, put wire extensions in here to have the ESC in the fuselage. It's a lot of work with the three wires here. I'd have to do it on both sides. What I'm going to do in the model, I believe, is in the engine nacelle, we'll have the ESC and the battery in each nacelle. I still need some extension to fit the wire into the fuselage. What I'm going to do is just these normal servo extension wires that will plug in here between the, um, uh, the ESC and the Y connector. That will give me plenty of room to put the receiver into the fuselage. Very easy, no soldering, nothing required. And these connectors, Y connectors and so forth, very easy to get off of Amazon. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, let me just give a short discussion on whether you want to use two batteries like I'm going to use versus one battery or one electronic speed control ESC or two electronic speed controls. You can use a single ESC. The problem is you're going to have to have um, a big enough ESC because it's going to be double the voltage for the two motors. And also with a single ESC, both motors have to be absolutely identical and there can't be any errors in them. If there's anything different or different um, characteristics of the motor, the single ESC will get confused because it's trying to control both and you could lose both engines. Same thing with the battery. There are videos out there. You just have to do a fair amount of soldering to have the um, red and black power wires from that single battery to both of the motors. That's not that big a deal. You can do it, but the whole idea of multi-engine flight is you have redundancy. It's safety with two engines. If you have two or more engines on an aircraft, but a single um, battery, if that single battery fails, then both motors go down. So for normal sport flyers, like what I'll be doing, is I think two batteries, two SCs are probably the best way ahead for that. So let's give a quick demonstration of plugging in the batteries. The order you do that, we'll watch the two motors work. Now, as I mentioned, on the left side, this is the one with the intact BEC wire. That's got to be put in first. I have my transmitter off so that it, um, the BEC is talking to everything like that. Notice there's a flashing light here. That's normal because I've not turned on my transmitter. Now, if I want, and I do want, I'll turn on the transmitter. And what's happening, just this motor is working and we can turn it on. Notice the flashing light is gone and the motor is working counterclockwise in the correct direction. We can now plug in our second battery. And you can see that both motors are working and in the proper direction. So that shows how to plug it in. Just make sure you plug in the first one with the uh, BEC connected. 
So now that I have these two motors set up, I've got to um, have an airplane to put them in. So I very quickly designed this airplane. I call it the Twinster. I'll probably come up with a better name. There's a download link for this in the video, uh, in the um, description of this video. And I will do a second video once I build and fly this twin engine model to show you um, how it all goes together. But what I've done just with this is, this is kind of what I call a working drawing because it gives the rough outline of the plane that I'm going to do, but I'll make adjustments as I go along. That'll flow into the final plan once I do it. But the first thing you've got to pick out is the wingspan. Foam board comes 30 inches wide. It would be very convenient like I do with my Bronco, just have a 30 inch wingspan model. I don't have to connect anything, uh, any wing halves. The problem is, with these two motors, the weight of the batteries and all that, that's asking a lot of the model to have a 30-inch wingspan. I, I just don't think that's enough. So I'm going to make it a 40-inch wingspan. Uh, the 40-inch wingspan came from extremely detailed calculations, analysis, aerodynamics, and um, just a lot of... No, it didn't. What I did was 40 inches fits well into the truck of my car, because I'm pretty sure as I build it, I'll have to see how long it is. It's going to be 32 inches long that I would like to glue the wing under the fuselage just to keep everything connected. If I can glue on the wing and it fits in the back of the car, I'll do that. If not, I'll have to put in dowels and the um, rubber bands to hold that on. Looking at a cord of uh, eight inches, which would be about right, and I'll go over all that in a subsequent video once I um, uh, successfully fly the twin and we'll see how it works. Incidentally, the um, model that I'll build for the twin will be four channels. It'll include rudder. Normally, I'd just do three channels with aileron and elevator. When you fly multi-engine aircraft, the rudder is an extremely important control in case you lose an engine. I don't anticipate losing an engine, but I think for trimming and all that, it'll be good to have a rudder because I am using uh, two different motors. There might be some slight, slight thrust diff differences between the two motors. The rudder should help um, sort that out. So thank you for joining me in this video about how to set up twin electric motors. It's really not that hard. You just cut the one wire. One thing I wanted to point out, and I, I neglected to do it, these two wires, when their battery is plugged in, these are hot wires, okay? There's, there, there's electrical current trying to go through them. You don't want to short things out. I'll just take some heat shrink tubing, put it over the two wires so there's no danger of that. If I wish to use this um, ESC again for normal flight, I'll simply solder on connecting wire between those two and I'm absolutely back to normal. You see some videos where they take an X-Acto knife, try to pry it out from the connector and pull it out. To me, it's a lot easier to simply cut the wires, heat shrink tubing to make sure they're safe, then you can just solder back in a, a connector if you have to do it. So again, thank you for joining me in this video. And um, the next video hopefully will be a flying twin engine RC model airplane on a foam board.